Morning everyone. Um, we are just waiting for everyone to come in. And today, um, <clears throat> really lucky to be having um, an interaction with Nena, uh, Nena Karunaratne from Sri Lanka. Um, just waiting for her to log in. And we'll do more of a formal introduction when she's live as well. Hope you're enjoying um, Makeup Week virtual, which is uh, you know an experiment by us that because we couldn't host our physical event in March because of the lockdown, um, we very quickly decided to look at how do we bring the makeup community together and how do we um, provide great content and interactions with domestic and international makeup artists. So hope you're enjoying the, you know, today is day four. Um, we've got to get another great day. We've got Nena today. We have um, a pre-recorded video with Marvi in the afternoon. And I'm just calling Nena into the Insta. She's just joining. And then five o'clock. Hi. hi, Nena. Hi, hi, hi. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So you're becoming used to this new digital world? <laughs> trying very hard, trying very hard. <laughs> yeah. Very new, very new, but trying hard. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> good. So I'll do a, a very quick inter introduction before we get into then talking about the topic itself. Um, so everyone who's logged in, Nena's um, the founder of Sal Salon Nena in Sri Lanka. Um, she was also the founder of Slahub, which is the Sri Lanka Association for Hair and Beauty. And she's the Asia president for the OMC as well. Um, a phenomenal woman, um, <laughs> you know, who's in the kind of galaxy of, you know, Nalini and Blossom and Group Breathe, etc. They're all kind of from the same group who have really been founders and mentors to the industry over you know the decades and um nena's again nena when when i was talking to you know that group like blossom and nalani and lata kanchandani and lata mohan recently we were saying what's been really interesting about our beauty and wellness industry is that it's been founded on the bedrock of really powerful positive women you know and you you even you know you throw a shenaz into that mix as well that actually this whole industry from, you know, Shenaz obviously was more 60s, but 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even into the last decade has been really run and by really powerful, positive women. You know, now we have a different generation coming in, more professionals and more men, but you know, it's really kind of women like you have really helped develop this whole industry across India, Sri Lanka. Um, so today we're gonna to be talking much more um, less beauty tips and more about education. Because I think that's a topic that people underestimate because I think, um, and especially now, because there are basically a dime a dozen courses you can go to. So everyone has an academy, everyone's doing training. You now see people, they do a one week course and then suddenly they become trainers. <laughs> so right now I think um, education has become quite a tricky area and if you're new and you're trying to become a makeup artist or a beautician, it gets quite confusing knowing which course to choose, which trainer to go to, how to develop your career. So I think we're very lucky to have you on board to really talk and educate people about the real importance of education and also what are the kind of mistakes you can make if you choose the wrong course and the wrong trainer and the wrong academy. So. Um, so I think we'll, I'll, I'll start more about an introduction because obviously a lot of the senior industry know who you are, but not, maybe there are some people that may not know who you are yet. So really talk to us first about how you got started, you know, you know, what you've been doing over the last few decades already. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the very colorful introduction. So good morning, India, uh, and the rest of the world, whoever is listening. Yes, I, uh, Everybody asked me this question, when did I start? But I think my, I remember having the desire to do hairdressing 
when I was about 14 or 15, as young as that. And, uh, and I had to, uh, I had to have a sort of a, a fight and an argument with my mother and leave school and tell her that I don't want to do higher studies. I just want to do hairdressing. I was very fortunate to have a intelligent mother like her and uh, so she i think it took her a lot of uh, time but uh, she, it was a big decision for her because she was also a widow she had to make the decisions on her own and then she said okay you can go into hairdressing uh, she also was inspired by my teacher who was a very famous stylist here called janet and she said uh, she told me something that's very important she said okay you select this as a career no problem you are a girl so for a girl, there's an option sometimes in life of not working. If you are married and sometimes you don't have to work. But every one of you have to be able to stand on your feet when the need arises. So you can select hairdressing, but I want you to be world-class qualified and be employable anywhere in the world. I think that was fantastic advice I got from my mother. And uh, I think that's also one reason that... Uh, Education is important to me. I also come from a family of journalists and teachers. Uh, and we believe a lot on edu proper education. My mother was a teacher. My father was a journalist. My, uh, my uncle is one of the most famous chemistry professors in the country, a brilliant trainer. So I think I, I don't know whether I had the talent or the inspiration. So education had always been a priority. Uh, after learning hairdressing and starting to work, I realized that my knowledge was not enough. So then I went to England. After that, we started. Uh, I started going to in, uh, different countries at least once a year, and uh, so start started the business one at a time, one at a time. In increase the salon business. I am qualified both as a hairdresser and a beautician, and uh, also wanted a lot of. Uh, uh, I really wanted to go international because I, in, 19, uh, in 1986, I was like, exposed to uh, hair and makeup competition, Asian hair and makeup competition. And I took part for the first time and I won the long hair style competition. So I met a lot of people. Uh, I must also say my husband helped me a lot. We met lots of different people, especially the best in, uh, influence I got was from Jun Encarnacion. He was a Filipino hairdresser. He was an Asian champion and the Philippine Hairdressers Association president. And um, because he was a brilliant hairdresser, but a better human being. I learned a lot from him and uh, he inspired us. We invited him to Sri Lanka, just I invited him to Sri Lanka and we just happened to have 100, 200 people for his seminars. So the second time he came, he said, Nana, you all are very powerful and you all are very united in your country. So why don't you form an association? So he inspired us to form the association in 1996, which is the Sri Lanka Association of Hairdressers and Beauticians. So we decided that we are a small country, there is no point in competing with each other. And uh, I think I, we strongly believe that competition is very important to education. So we decided to go straight away into international competition. And <laughs> our luck, yeah, straight away, so we had here Asia Pacific. So for our luck, we, we, we planned the first one and somebody gave me Satya Saran's number. And I called her. She was the editor of Femina. I said, listen, I want somebody. I want someone from India. She gave me Nalini's and Yasmin's number and Blossom's numbers. And uh, I invited them. So we had 14 countries and a fantastically successful uh, competition. Inspired by that, we had it for 10 years. We had it for 10 years. In fact, the last one was in Mumbai in 2005 uh, with the great floods. So... Uh, so we had, and then that's where I met Nali and Yasmin Blossom. Subsequently, we invited Lata Mohan from uh, down south. Uh, Savio and then came for the competitions. Uh, anyway, anyway, we made huge international friendships through this. And uh, uh, Procter & Gamble sponsored us for 10 years. My budget at that time, Vikas, was $150,000. We had very wow. good seminars. Pakistan, Thailand, Japan, 14 countries. Then 
in 2000 um, uh, in 2000 i think i was once having a chat with blossom at the taj lobby in colombo and there was the omc and uh, mondial coffee i didn't know where, no no omc and uh, some other organization i can't remember i sat with blossom and asked blossom which one is better blossom said nana join omc so okay so i took her advice then we in 2000 yeah in 2000 uh was it 2000 or 2000 i'm not very sure uh, because they had the 10th anniversary of the berlin wall breaking and they had the largest hair exhibition in the world in berlin and we were invited by schwarzkopf our party itself had 2500 people so schwarzkopf invited us and we also had world championships at that time i was shocked to see world championships for the first time so berlin had the greatest biggest event of celebrating the 10 years with the largest ever hair show and exhibition and of course all companies including shoskov had grand parties and me and my assistant kanchana we just took the guy i just walked up and said can i meet the president of the omc so he was french the secretary said yes and the french gentleman came i said we want to join he said okay you can join so we are from sri lanka and we like to join he said okay i'll send you the application forms these are the rules and regulations so in 2002 we joined omc and uh, we came on asia i was we were under the japanese uh, japanese president was the asia president then i was continue we were continuing our old own competitions here in asia pacific then in 2005 or a uh, japanese president phoned and said nana i am finishing my term but i haven't done anything else can you please have an organize an asia cup i said listen i am already organizing here in asia pacific in mumbai at the grand hyatt and uh, that's the time we organized hip here india people we all got together and uh, we organized it even even before that in 2000 when we had the hair asia pacific in mumbai i got lataya mohan and them to organize aiba but i think it's defunct now i don't know so anyway in 2005 i said listen i can't if you want i'll do both together otherwise we have to do our own thing we have already gone halfway so we got permission to have both events at the grand hyatt in 2005 and at that time i was elected the next asian president subsequently we were uh, omc brought in a rule that omc countries should not in- organize other international events which i think is right so thereafter we dedicated ourselves to omc and i i must say for the last so many years i am i'm still the asia's old president i want to get out of it but i think maybe i am good i don't know they they are keeping me and uh, and we have uh, really expanded we are really expanded uh, because this program is on education i like to tell you it's a bit of it's a, it's a bit of a bagging vikas but i like to tell you that i had a big budget for education when uh, uh, at that time and i used to have organized seminars education seminars in asia i unfortunately india wasn't very pa- active in participating but lots of countries did especially china and when we had one asia cup in china i remember a, 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 a journalist was interviewing me and the president of the china association said china is world champion today because of nayana i am not saying that i am only saying that china was smart to use our training programs to develop their people so of course she told that at that time to the journalist but uh, she basically thanked me but they were very smart to use the uh, use the training that we provided for the whole region so uh, so i am actually fortunate to be highly exposed to the best best of the people in the world and i am also fortunate to uh, for very fortunate to Uh, like enjoy teaching i really really enjoy teaching because on a personal note uh, i am from a very simple middle class family and uh, we we didn't have we didn't have so much wealth as such but we had education and good uh, upbringing and i've got a lot in life today everything is by cutting hair
and be <laughs> from hairdressing so i'm a very proud hairdresser i'm a very proud hairdresser and uh, if i can do it everyone else can do it also i firmly believe brilliant <clears throat> super story nana um thank you and then on, and i didn't know about your parents you know um journalist and teacher so obviously your mom being a teacher that's a big influence and in, probably a big influence in how you've developed your career as well and you know why you're so passionate about teaching and giving back yeah it um, it, it uh, i i believe because uh, uh, teaching i suppose is also talent but I, i always tell people nursing or other medical profession teaching and there are few others these are god's jobs these are jobs given by god they have to be performed with the commitment to god of course teachers doctors have to earn a living we need to be paid but first comes the sincerity of teaching i think my i think my uncle is a secret he i told you he's a, he he's the first guy i'm bragging too much i'm sorry he's the first guy in sri lanka to get a first class in chemistry and he, wow. he ended up yeah he 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 ended up as a professor of chemistry so when i was doing my uh, ordinary levels exam he came one day and said how is your science believe me i promise you he sat with me for not more than 5 days he taught me chemistry and i got very good results in chemistry just for 5 days he's a brilliant teacher then also also uh we used to go to my mother's office and work because she my father's office rather my mother took over as a journalist so we learned to type letters we learned with the typewriter we learned to do cyclo styling so today with the chemistry knowledge my color is good i understand color better with the typing knowledge even world federation things i am the high tech hairdresser <laughs> you think i have no technology knowledge but i i am better than many hairdressers because i can type <laughs> i can write i can edit yeah it, it's a, it's a good example that uh, it's a good example that whatever you learn is never a waste yeah and i think that's great great um tips also for those uh, in the community as makeup artists or stylists etc and those wanting to join that why having this kind of holistic understanding of you know whether it's chemistry or communication writing is so important because Indeed. otherwise you can become quite limited um you can become quite limited in your understanding of actually being a beautician or stylist or makeup artist is actually a big role there's a lot you need to understand if you want to yeah. become really good at your career yeah um you when you when you start so when you started like Where did you go to school? Like which academy did you go to okay, to start I, your career? Uh I went to a school here, a girls school called Bishops College and uh, so we that's that's the uh, gen uh, O levels. What do you call that in uh, in India? I don't know. That's uh, it's not the university entrance the one before that. It's called the gen, uh, ordinary levels. That's a grade grade 11. that's that's a that's the first public exam you have to sit for so that's the one that yeah. i uh, i did that's a, that's a final exam i did in school i never went into the uh, a levels university entrance level i didn't go so i finished this and that was also a high 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 drama actually it's a silly story you know we had our exams in december and somewhere in october we went for a wedding my mother took me for a wedding because as i told you she was a widow so she always wanted a child to accompany her so i used to be the one to go for weddings and this at this wedding was janet i think lots of lots of indians know janet she was the best and the biggest hairdresser we had at that time 40 years ago and uh, she, you know her son runs parcelon It is oh wow yeah yeah yeah. Spasira. Spasira. yeah so janet then then like can you can you hold the camera um okay. a little bit down so we can, yeah perfect yeah. perfect so so she so i my mother and i met her in october 
and my mother made the mistake of talking to her in front of me about hairdressing. Then uh, Janet said, you know, if this girl is sitting for the exam in uh, December, it's ideal time for her to start. She can come in January. On the 30th of January, I'm starting the class. I took it very seriously. I went to school and told everybody, I am leaving school. So <laughs> we, we get the December holidays. But during the December holidays, we had the public exam. Exams were on the holidays. So after the last paper, we had a party. They gave me a party, farewell party. <laughs> we, we used to buy chocolate cake, cut it into quarter and eat. That was our party. So after that, they gave me gifts. You know, they gave me handkerchiefs and pieces, uh, cakes of soap as parting gifts. I got the gifts and got into the car and got hammered by my mother. Chata, chata, she slapped me on the face and said, who asked you to leave school? I said, I don't know. They gave me, I'm not going back to school. So I think my mother was... <laughs> Anyway, 31st of December, uh, January, I started the course. Uh, on 1st of July, I finished my course and I was already on a 50 rupee employment. And uh, by the time the school results came, I was already employed. So I, I had a good start. Wow. <laughs> that was six months full-time training. Full-time training. Six yeah. months full-time training. Six months full-time training and she employed me immediately. She, Janet employed me and I worked for her for about three years. I, uh, uh, because she's the world's greatest marketing person. I've never seen. I don't think she has. She, her educa school education must be the same as mine or less. But wonderful human being again. Beautiful woman. Very fashionable. Very compassionate. And I was very lucky. I was brought up by two strong women. I'm very lucky. My mother and Janet. Very lucky. Wow. So the, and that kick-started your career. And yeah. then, um, so, you know, just moving on to like um, more of the topic about education. So what, do you, what kind of advice can you to, you know, those listening and you know, those joining in about why it's important to choose the right um, education the right academy, the right course, the right teachers. And especially now what we find in India, um, there, are, there are thousands and thousands of academies, trainers, courses. So it can become quite confusing um, for, for people trying to enter this profession. But, uh, yeah, so what but, advice uh, would you give? Uh, you know, the, 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 the problem with our industries, uh -huh. we survive on talent. We survive on talent and we survive also on talent. Your volume's gone a bit there now. Can you hear me? Can you speak a bit louder? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello? A bit muffled, that her internet connection. Okay. Can you hear me now? Better? A little bit. It's faint. Hello? See if I'll go back in. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm going to log you back in. Okay. If you if you leave and okay. join back. Okay, fine. So while Nena's leaving, um, and she's she's joining back in, um, really prepare your questions because uh, Nena's one of um, the top experts we have in the industry. You know, not just in a, you know in India, Sri Lanka, but she's one of the. Um, top educators in this field. So really do start sending questions in about how do you choose the right basic courses to start with? How do you upskill? Um, how do you want to develop your career? Hi, Nena. Hi, hi. Better? Clearer? Is it better now? I think people can hear you, but is this your phone? Now? Um, can everyone hear us clearly? If you just comment. People are messaging in saying they can hear us. So if you keep okay. ask SP yeah. actually. Okay. Yep. So we're talking about um, how do you go about choosing the right course and academies to go to. I was saying uh, the the most important thing is that we live on talent and hard work. 
so that can take us only to a certain degree but we can't go further the what lots of people don't understand is that you need the basic knowledge you need the basic yeah. knowledge for everything including makeup education so what what i would like all students and all teachers to do is to include the basic knowledge on education so, so along with the creative fashion can you hear me um i think people i can not hear you as clearly but everyone else can hear us um yeah <laughs> what's that i think you can keep talking about okay. um yeah choosing the yeah, right so courses I, yeah so everyone should actually uh, i the, the the see the problem here is the, i think the problem is not so much with us but with the countries and the governments we should have the basic education controlled because uh, hair because to me hair dressing beauty therapy makeup is all done on human beings so it's a very serious job we can't play the fool and i think covid-19 has really given us that uh, warning signal we cannot play the fool with health and hygiene and people don't know that value when they don't know the basic education so even for makeup when you are talented you can do makeup but your talent will also be multiplied and the product will be 10 times better when you do when you know the basic subject so when it comes to makeup as an example you have to have a good knowledge of the skin bone structure you have to have a good knowledge of the products and the, and also the communication the and the marketing what are you selling who are you selling what is the makeup you are going to do lots of people don't understand this lots of people don't understand so when you have you need to i think the the academies should also make sure that they have the basic knowledge basics basics foundation level very firmly done i i vikas i am i i have i know a lot of people now because thanks omc and because the subject mm. today is oh, makeup let me tell you the best guys i have met in omc they are world's best they are fantastically artistic but every one of them have very serious beauty foundation education every one of them have a good foundation level education on beauty so that is what is lacking see the yeah, even yesterday there was a one and a half hour program on national tv i was put with two doctors the uh, the country is arguing asking for makeup because we have got certain services we haven't got makeup and uh, they are arguing but the thing is the brushes the combs everything has to be washed hygienically maintained so when that is not there covid 19 is a threat so this is, this comes with the basic makeup i must tell you a hilarious story i think uh, i think you are having dominic crobbs with you uh, very soon and also his teacher was uh, was nanara who is a world education trainer we i got both of them to sri lanka both of them the big five star hotels the were sri lanka's best bridal dressers for the class you know the first thing they did was they shouted at us both of them separately and got them to clean the makeup boxes the so called superstars had filthy makeup boxes all the boxes were clean brushes were washed all the, the all the trays were lined with tissue i was very happy i was so happy wow Yes, because they think they they don't give importance to that. They don't give importance to that. So so people don't understand. Um, uh, I don't know whether I should I should tell this, but I I have told this publicly anyway. When you go to national TV stations, in my my salon, I don't allow anyone to eat by hand. when you go to all tv station generally we go around 9:30 10 in the morning believe me because i don't breathe when they put the makeup i don't breathe when they put the makeup because the fingers are smelling of curry they have had their breakfast 
and sri lankan indian breakfast is rice and curry and roti and curry so they are eating the curry and then they are applying makeup the the brush is cleaned but the finger is smelling so these are very serious issues wow it's it's very serious so but we have to understand we have to understand that i you are talking about uh, talking about education i i will tell you another story i can tell you lots of stories okay <laughs> we called a professor in sri lanka yeah we were, we were lucky cuz um kori did a session yesterday on this um kori valia ah, so we did a whole oh, one hour on hygiene and build and makeup oh. kits he is very good he i have brought him to sri lanka 5 6 times he is very good he is very sweet and he is a very uh, prim and proper person yes lot to learn from him fantastic good very good very good uh, the the other important thing is personal hygiene as well because we are so close to the customer we are so close to the customer so we need to really concentrate on that so there are the basics we are talking about and then of course the face structures uh, you need to know the bone structure you need to have face shapes skin tones skin problems skin issues you need to understand all those things and then you have to understand the products because lots of people go by the numbers no learn the product learn the color and you need to understand the color tones when you do makeup because makeup does not go on a white surface makeup goes on a face or a skin and the skin has colors basically four colors black brown red and yellow so these tones are going to reflect with the product you use so you need to understand your tones and nobody's got a perfect face you've got patchy faces so how do you balance them and makeup is not taking a face putting concrete on your face makeup is not makeup is bringing out your natural beauty as much as possible in a general makeup so unless of course you do a character or you do a different uh, look completely so so the 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 every makeup artist is talented but they lack the foundation uh, knowledge and they lack the discipline and discipline in health hygiene and conduct how do you recommend um, how do you recommend someone goes about choosing the right curriculum and the right course because here there are so many courses academies hundreds of institutes that it gets quite okay, confusing I, okay i i i cannot talk about others but i will just tell you what we have prepared for the makeup course we have a intense makeup certificate which is about minimum 120 hours so what we are asking for is the bone structure and the skin skin and bone structure face you have to understand your face shapes and all those things then you need to have a complete knowledge of the products even if you take a simple thing like a foundation because one is one is cream one is liquid why is that one is a cream one is a liquid one is a cake why you have to understand that then you need to understand your tools equipment and tools then the methods of makeup application methods of makeup application so we have basic application camouflage which means hiding highlighting shading all the techniques you have to understand color corrections color balance and you are you are supposed to do different looks basic makeup day makeup evening makeup uh, different looks and then of course under bridal there are different bridals if you really take bridal uh you get the, even in india if you look at it the uh, christian brides are white all the others are red and very colorful so you need to look a pretty bride the lots of people believe you take a girl and turn her into a sri devi or an aishwarya rai that is not a bride that is a very you have to make her uh, this particular girl has to be the prettiest she should be as pretty as she should be and as a makeup artist we also have the issues of managing other things such as 
such as uh, jewelry clothes hair all that has to be managed with uh, with uh, the makeup so we have to have learn to strike the balance because everything is getting loaded on one human body all the jewels all the sarees everything so that's another thing so the bridal makeup has many aspects different even in world championships we have different bridal makeup then you have photographic makeup which is very different completely different fashion show makeup is completely different you do a makeup for a fashion show model it is not to show off the makeup it is to show off the clothes so you have to coordinate with the designer and do makeup which is very doesn't attract attention but also attractive and request uh, abide by the request of the designer who what, shows what's the name if you could explain yeah if you could um explain the main differences between even bridal like you have con contemporary bridal commercial bridal so what are the main differences if you could educate okay. our viewers about that see when it comes to a commercial bridal the uh, the bride that you would do in a salon a real bride i think her con her requirement her background her face her her the size of the function the time of the function all these have to be considered the clothes she wears and please don't override your capacity don't show just because you are beautiful you do beautiful eye makeup that doesn't have to be applied on her because this girl's bad feature is the eye because in makeup or in anything the 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 secret is to enhance the good features and minimize the bad so when this girl's eyes are not so good why should you do the biggest eye makeup and do uh, disfigure her no so you enhance you balance so uh, it should be as subtle as the requirement of the bride and the occasion of course indian indian sri lankan brides are a little more colorful we can be a little more colorful but uh, then when it comes to creative fashion makeup you can go a little overboard i think all of us makeup artists need that fashion even hairdressers we do mundane work in the salon because the customer needs basics but when it comes to cuts and colors and makeup we want to uh, spread our wings a bit so that's where the fashion shows and hair shows and bridal shows come then of course you get the very creative makeup and uh, and uh, stage makeup and character makeup they are all different they are all different and they are all very very different uh, techniques are required photographic makeup has a lot to do with the camera and the lights believe me i am also not very good one of my, my, my one of my partners kanchana she is supposed to be sri lanka's best i am not so good but she understands light very well and also the requirement if you take a if you take a milk powder if you take a milk powder advertisement and the lady is with the the mother of the house and the daughter what with the what makeup would the mother wear vikas very natural subtle no makeup look so you so you need to understand the scenario right very important we have one question here from um, yeah. sara mukadam which is more about um how she saying um she basically how to get started working with big artists so like how do people from not a great background who are she's saying surviving by teaching themselves how do they get to start shadowing assisting more senior artists what advice would you I, give them i think i think first of all you need to move around with a with the with this you have to find situations to meet these people i think this current platform is fantastic right because i myself met a lot of people through your platform meet people go for seminars after the show go to the backstage talk to them make the connection that's number one second thing is offer your services for free offer your services for free be an assistant and sometimes you have to do the dirtiest of jobs sometimes you and you learn the best by doing those carrying a bag holding a brush you learn the best you observe the person and you learn the best 
So, so I think offering your service for free and doing the basic things because no star will take you to do the top uh, job. No way, no way. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, because uh, actually, I, um, yeah, Clint, we I had. Want, um, I want to give you one example of what happened to me. Can I, please? Yeah, Clint mentioned this a couple of days ago. Clint Fernandez. So yes, yes. he was saying that. Obviously, a lot of people come asking to assist, and he was saying, actually, what I require, I'm happy to work with anyone, but they have to be dedicated, passionate. They need to say, I want them to work at least one year with me, doing all the grunt work. Yes. And like yes. he said, for free, because yes. he goes, we spent so many years training to become big artists that actually we want, we will only contribute to others who really want to learn and are hardworking and passionate and dedicated, like you're saying. Also, so it also builds the trust and confidence. You know, when I was when I was just a very young hairdresser, I also did dancing. So we had a show, we had a dance show, and my dance teacher said, "Can you do the makeup?" I said, "Okay." I was thrilled, of course, for free. So there was this lady who was dressing the dancers. She's basically a virago. Naina, just shut your mouth and go and do the makeup. She will criticize you. She will shout at you. She will demand things from you. Shut your mouth and do the makeup. So I just shut my mouth and I did the makeup. At the end of that, she said, "You are a good girl. <laughs> you are a very good girl. You are a very patient girl. You won't believe because for the next fifteen years, I had the greatest relationship with that lady." She took me everywhere to do shows, and I learned so much. So uh, it was a good lesson when you are a newcomer. Just follow, just follow, and build the confidence, build the trust of the artist. Very important. A quick shout out. We've got Heva Shiva saying hi, and that uh, he started his his education from IHB Colombo, and he he loved I, those things. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about is obviously um, you've helped train many beauticians, artists, stylists, um, and mentored and inspired them. But you've also done a lot of amazing work creating uh, competition winners, you know, national level, global level. So, what tips would you give to um, current artists and aspiring ones? What's the difference between working as an artist? And being competition ready because it's a big leap, and very different. So, what tips would you give to those who want to be competition ready? I think it's practice, 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 and practice. Complete dedication, and also killer instinct. You want to go and win it. And world champions can never be won in one time. It generally, I would say, four years. But some people do they get there by on the third, second or third year. Follow the big people, learn it, learn the techniques, get good training, but practice, practice, and practice. Because I have seen people practicing generally eighteen hours a day. They just practice. Eighteen hours a day, they practice. So you have to really practice and uh, improve your uh, craft. Very, very important. And every one of us can win if we are dedicated. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. And it, and good training. You need to get foundation training from good, uh, good uh, world champion artists will always help you because they know the tricks. They they know the feelings. They know the tricks. They know how to prepare. They will also tell you the uh, heart. Uh, you know the your heartbeats, your timings. Now I always tell people when the timing is half an hour, you have to prepare yourself for twenty minutes because you need to have five minutes to settle down, and you need to have five. And how do you do that? How how do you approach like an OMC champion like? Um, obviously, some of your Sri Lankan um, artists recently were winners of the, you know, OMC yeah, Cup. Most of them. Most this year. So how do you do that? 
most of them who are who are winners most of them are uh, are available they are happy to teach they are happy to share their knowledge with you even the world champions are very happy they are very humble people but you need to be you need to be very dedicated so even the local people they they we worked very hard because we we got second and third place in world championships by working from january to september non stop by practicing from january to september non stop and they and even after going to paris they don't even have a cup of tea or a coffee and another very important thing for makeup especially a very 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 important thing is to get a beautiful model because no 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 judge in the world will cheat a good judge will never cheat but every judge is a human being every judge is a human being so they get attracted to beauty and models i have seen this in brides i have seen brides beautiful brides i have looked forward to dressing those <laughs> brides after dressing they are like this but you see some brides who are not so beautiful they hold themselves up like that so you need to get a supermodel who is loving the job you know i have seen these models that we pay 600 euro but because they mm. make your coffee they make your tea for you they put up with uncomfortable room situations they don't complain they will they will eat a whole piece of bread and wait and they will support you completely another 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 thing right now we can talk about cuz it's education what are your thoughts on um online education because right now um it's difficult to do physical education so is it possible to still upskill yourself train yourself you know doing online education at the moment well i i have started online education uh, with ihb hair not beauty because of that but okay Uh, let me tell you you can't do everything online you can't do everything online you can do a lot online you can do a lot online but the balance has to be on physical you have to meet and lots of techniques have to be correct so i would say i would say i don't know whether it's a 60 40 situation i am not very experienced yet but for a novice for a novice definitely you need to have practical work with the teacher by because in makeup in hair everything sometimes it's only just this angle just this these are the small thing that make a world of a difference you know very simple things so you need to be there holding it that way this way for that so not everything but a lot can be done but i think because if you are qualified and if you are going for higher training like a seminar or say for instance people like us go for a, a, a creation of corys or dominics or something like that then online is good enough because we know the technique we only have to look and see but the real thing uh, we need uh, i don't think we we are a practical related business so, so we need uh, yeah yeah we need to uh, i don't know the percentage i would say 64 yeah, would you have Yeah. And then I think um I know I'm going back to choosing a course but how long do, how long does it take to go from scratch from beginner to actually becoming a proficient makeup artist because we see here many courses are like one week two weeks three no, weeks no, no. and then suddenly are, says there are makeup artists but how much time and how long should a course be do you think for someone like, to really become a proficient artist i don't like the word week vikas because they say five weeks and have only one day a week they say it's a five week course and they have once a week so i would rather go by days i would ask for minimum 20 days minimum or 120 to 130 hours minimum 120 to 150 hours would be ideal or by days minimum 20 minimum 20 by days and when you say day it's a full day it's a full day be uh, basically 6 6 to 7 hours 
So it's better to count by the hours. Better to count by the hours. Hundred and twenty. And then what kind of what kind of uh, content should they cover? And if it's twenty days, you know, five days should be on what? Five days should be on what? Because, for example, you understand chemistry and skin very well. How much? How should a course be split up? I think I think you need to. I need to. I think you need to start with uh, with the founder with the with the theory. about the skin and the bone structure and the skin tones and the product knowledge because most of the students are creative people they are they get bored with theory so you can start with day makeup or something like that and another huge mistake our teachers make is they get you to copy that is wrong because not no teacher should ever get a child to copy a makeup or a cut or a color you teach the techniques and 50% of the time the student will create better than you so tell her what the eyes are tell her what the eyebrows are what is the skin tone how do you make the nose shorter you teach them and let them do and then find the find the mistakes and correct them so i think that is very important so you start with basic and then you go into different i think i make up will take a long time it's a beautiful area of creativity i i make up different i make up so there so go go step by step i i remember dominic saying this as well when he did his master class uh in january in bombay where he you know when he was doing at sima's academy yeah he was teaching i you know um the i look and he said very quickly there were some being trained that were better than him so he was shocked how good they yeah. were but you're right and he was um humble enough to say this work is better than what i'm producing because he, he was, was focusing on the technique yeah he was a brilliant teacher and he he handled everybody differently because we had different levels in that class different people different levels and he handled them all and there are about three people i don't want to mention the names he bugged me and said please nayana carry take them forward to world championship these people have the talent three people so from smaller. india she he showed and said they have were have were the, he said you give them to me for Three weeks, I will make them world champions. Ah, oh, he said. He said, give them to me for three weeks. I will make them come in the first five. First five. And then the next year, I will. Make we're we're lucky that years. tomorrow, uh, Dominique's going to be doing um, the I look tomorrow as well. So he's going to be spending oh, time with us. That's great. Well, you know, great. training. You know, those that are signed in to do that. Yeah. that's good that's good he's a, he's a brilliant teacher even india has some fantastic teachers very sincere teachers very they they really pick out the people and i watch dominic also he allowed them to do he allowed them to do uh, as they wish and you you observe the way the hand moves the way how lovingly you kind of paint you know your hand moves lovingly the brush strokes that's that's the love for the art Yeah. So that's good. And then um I think we'll we're coming up to an hour so we'll wrap up soon. The other thing yeah. I want to say to those um who are watching, we are fortunate this weekend we're running a master class with Vipul and Shamli um both yeah. who again are mm -hmm. extraordinary teachers. So they're yeah. going to be running a two-day master class Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday which is mm -hmm. four hours content but really getting to understand the basics like what yeah. Neno was saying. So um please dm us if you would like to know more about the master class this weekend um it's good no i then I, any I, other I, advice you would give to artists so actually picking up on you're saying that dominic mentioned there are a few talents that came to his training that uh, should enter you know the world championships they're ready what would what would you advise those you know those two or three that were there like what would be the next steps for them to So I to think get to them I, competing I, at that level yeah i think they should get themselves organized especially for world championships we have either blossom or uh, sangeeta from aiba you have to contact them and get into a proper training training or uh, training uh, group you have to start training because the problem with most of us is we just because we are the we, you know most of us are huge frogs in small wells yeah 
so you you haven't seen the well of world uh, the world you know it's it's different so we need to understand and be humble and be open to teach be open to teach and lots of people are willing to help so need to need to get organized and as a group start training together because even in world championships when you go as a group your chances are stronger as a country see to me vikas to me if five people are going from india my first requirement is for india to win i want a medal for india first after that i would have my favorite out of the five but first india should win so you have to push the whole team let the best win mm -hmm. the chances are higher yeah before we wrap up so i know a topic that you're very um passionate and focused on and we discussed last week on the salon panel just a kind of final message to the viewers about health and hygiene so what should they be doing with regards to health hygiene safety because even when we had other international artists coming to india and watching they've been quite shocked at like you were mentioning um quite shocked at health and safety in india as well so what would you advise make up artists what are the basics they really need to understand first of all first of all with the covid-19 situation protect yourself so please do not touch a single client without your face mask and your shield because you have to protect yourself because with makeup because we can't cover the customer's mouth in the hair cuts we can cover the customer's mouth and nose but the makeup we can't so please protect yourself second thing use everything disposable which means the tissues the tissues and wipeable things all disposable and uh, try to use sponges small pieces which are used and thrown away at least this time and your brushes after every single customer they have to be washed with soap and water and dried everyone and please do not put your finger or the brush into any container put a different spatula you can use a you can use a matchstick you can use a, a, a old pencil a clean one anything you can use a cotton bud dip that do not dip those things that you touch the person's face so please be careful because in makeup you can't mouth close her mouth and nose that is the fear so that's all and and cover herself with a towel or a tissue throw them away throw them away yesterday i learned another another lesson i would like to share with you the doctors are saying some of the sometimes the virus stays more than a week because on certain um, tissues and bags and things so the doctors advised us yesterday tie your garbage bags tie them up don't keep them open keep your dustbins with lids till they are disposed so i think just follow them just follow those things and make a very very hygienic system for yourself and please change your clothes for each customer you have to change your blouse or a shirt because her mouth is open the the material can hold the virus for 24 hours each customer well if you have see if you have one bride that's okay or you have one bride you have say this 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 wedding you have four people to do the makeup you can do it but once you finish please go and change your blouse or shirt or wear an apron and change the apron cover yourself with an apron or a cape and change it or about to end yeah just for these few months only brilliant super so we're coming to the end we've got about 15 seconds left nena before we finish um any other tips you'd want to give um especially on health and hygiene um uh, no wash your hands please just um just wrapping up i'm just going to um spend a few more minutes with nena uh, if you have any questions do for him through send them through um sara will message you separately about joining ibook um and we can dm you also the contact um uh 
uh, of who you should talk to to join them. For Nana to come in. Yeah. Hi, okay. Nana. Hi, hi. <laughs> Got lost. Hello. I can hear you now. Um, great. So, I, no, I know we've, you've given some really good tips on the health and hygiene and safety. And I think, um, like you were saying last week, this is uh, one of the positives, if you can talk about that from COVID, is that we as a community really have to take hygiene, safety really seriously now because, you know, there have been poor practices that have crept in, shortcuts we've been taking. But now we can't afford to do those shortcuts and, you know, and have bad habits. So it's a great opportunity to do that. Um, is that, would you, so when you're choosing a course, would you also recommend people look at that side? Like is the course talking about hygiene and what we might consider some of the boring aspects of, you know, the makeup side, but you would then say, look, a course has to educate you on health, safety, hygiene, and you've got to understand this work before you get into the technical work. Because, because we only sell one thing. We don't sell anything. We don't sell anything tangible. We only sell happiness. And we only sell beauty. How on earth can you sell beauty without health and hygiene? And our customer is a human being. It's a huge responsibility. I always tell this. We are not doctors. I'm not comparing ourselves with the doctors. But we handle human beings. We handle the human bodies externally, the hair and the skin. It's a responsibility and we sell satisfaction. You pay two, three, four, five thousand rupees, twenty-five thousand rupees for a bride. She goes and washes herself in three hours. Everything is gone. She goes and has a bath. Every 25,000 is down the drain. But she's happy with the thing called satisfaction. So how can we sell this if we are not clean? And, and health and hygiene is in there. Every single education system of hair, beauty, makeup and nails. Nails is the most dangerous technique. And yesterday at the discussion... The doctor was telling the COVID-19 is very similar to World War II. The whole world is changing. And this doctor said, this is a message from God. Mother Earth has said, hey, stop. Take, look back. What the hell are you doing? So she said, world is going to change. Health, hygiene, natural things, local things. Uh, love for the environment. That is why even in the previous thing, I was uh, I was asking, don't pollute the environment because these new norms have come to stay. The world has been taught a lesson, and we are all changing. So health and hygiene is going to be a huge aspect, and I am telling you because in India also, eventually the successful salons will be the healthy and the hygienic salons. Customer will yeah. know. Customer won't go. Yeah. Because customer I agree with that. I think, yeah, I completely agree with that. The, yeah. the and, salons and, or the artists that take this seriously um, and have a great reputation for health and safety and hygiene, they will be the ones that are more successful during this phase. The yeah. ones that don't take it seriously and customers are not sure, you know, they will struggle a lot more to, yeah. to keep their business yeah. going. You know, the doctor said another very important thing because uh, we were the discussion was on the beauty industry. She said most of the beauty people are young. Most of the workers are young, but they don't understand. They go home and there is the old parents and the old grandparents. You carry the virus in your body. You put the family in danger. You may not get it, but you, you carry the virus via your clients to the home. So you mm. put the older people in danger. We all know that over 60s then people who have respiratory problems, diabetes are in danger. So, so it's a very, very serious issue. 
but at the same time the nice thing about it is it's very easy to solve if you change your lifestyle lifestyle habits if you i won't say change improve as simple as that mm. so we we i think beauty salons will have to set that example they will have to they will yeah. have to. And I think we're already seeing that now that um, like Sri Lanka has been open a week, Bangalore has been open. Um, yes. Sorry, Sri Lanka has been open two weeks now, and then you know Bangalore yeah, I mean, opened this week. Yeah, Bangalore, so yeah, already we starting to see. Monday. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But we have. Um, been, yeah. See, you you see because now when a bride is being dressed, I am sure the bride's mother and father are going to double check on the makeup artist who's going to visit the house. Yes or no? Not only his ability. His health and hygiene stand. They are going to check on him because their daughter is going to be at uh, risk. Yeah, that's a great message actually for artists. That when, um, especially if you're doing bridal work, when the when it all starts again, that are you known as artists that understand health and safety and hygiene? So that's a great point. You know, for those that, as well as the technical side, you really have to understand the basics of cleanliness. Yes. Super. Yes, you have to. So then, I, I want. I want to wrap up because uh, we've um, we've kind of we've gone over an hour, and I think we've covered a lot of topics for the community okay. as well. I really want to thank you for your time and you know your contribution to everyone. Thank you. It was good exposure. I'm happy to have shared my knowledge. I hope it was of good use. Thank you. Thank you. It is great. Thanks, Nana. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.